So now that we have the concentration of A at any given time t, and that's given by this integrated rate law expression, we can now determine the concentration of B at any time t. Because if you recall, the concentration of B was equal to the concentration of A0 minus the concentration of A. And this was, again, based on this assumption that we had before we said in our system that the concentration of B0 was equal to 0, which means that B only comes from A. Well, now that we have this expression for the concentration of A, we can substitute that directly into this expression. So the concentration of B is equal to the concentration of A0. And from that, I'm going to subtract off the concentration of A0 divided by Kr plus Kf all times Kr plus Kf times e raised to the power of negative kr plus kf times t. And I've left this huge gap here because what I'm going to do to help simplify this expression is that I'm going to multiply the first half of this term by kr plus kf over kr plus kf. And so essentially what this is is I'm multiplying the first part of this term by 1. But what it really does is it allows me to subtract these two terms from each other because I have this common fraction being this kr plus kf term. And so what that then lets me do is it lets me then write my concentration of b being equal to, and I can actually distribute out concentration of a0 over kr plus kf, so basically the concentration of a0 and the denominator. But what that leaves me with is being able to write down all the numerators, which is kr plus kf, and then I'm going to distribute in this minus sign, so that goes in front of both of these terms, which means I get minus kr minus kf e raised to the power of kr plus kf t. And so now I can start to cancel out like terms, and I can even distribute out a few more, which means that I have a kr here, subtract off kr, and I actually have then left over a kf and a kf, which means I can distribute out that term, which means that my concentration of b is equal to kf times the concentration of a0 over kr plus kf, and that's going to be multiplied by 1 minus e raised to the power of negative kr plus kf times t. Well, this is now great, because what we have now is integrated rate law expressions for the concentration of A, and an integrated rate law expression for the concentration of B. And so now we can actually plot, and we can start to play around with the idea of how long does it take for this system to, to reach equilibrium. Now, of course, before we do that, let's look at two extreme cases. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite these two expressions side by side just to make it easier to see this stuff. So here's the integrated rate law expression for the concentration of A which is equal to the concentration of A0 divided by Kr plus Kf, and that's going to be multiplied by Kr plus Kf times E raised to the negative Kr plus Kf times T, and we have the concentration of B being equal to Kf times the concentration of A0 divided by Kr plus Kf, and that's going to be multiplied by 1 minus E raised to the negative kr plus kf times t. The first thing that probably would be good to test is just to see if we regain our initial conditions from these expressions, meaning what happens when we set t is equal to 0. Well, in this case, our concentration of A, that's going to be equal to our concentration of A0 over kr plus kf. We have our expression here, kr plus kf e raised to the power of 0. Because if I set t is equal to 0, then I have e raised to the power of 0. e raised to the 0, well, that goes to 1. So what we're left with here is kr plus kf divided by kr plus kf, which means that my concentration of A is equal to A0 at t is equal to 0. Also, if I do the same thing here with my concentration of B, I have that being equal to kf times the concentration of A0 over kr plus kf. 1 minus e raised to the power of 0. What we can do is we can do the same thing, e raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1, but that means then that I have 1 minus 1, which makes this whole expression equal to 0. And what that says to us then is that my concentration of b is equal to 0, which is what we set it to be at the beginning of the problem. We said we didn't have any b starting in the system, and that's what we regain here.
what about if we wanted to figure out what our equilibrium concentrations were? Well, in that case, we would let our t go for a very long time. And in this case, we're going to let t be such a big number, we're going to say that t is infinitely large. And so what does that do for our expressions? Well, we would say our concentration of a is equal to our concentration of a naught times kr plus kf. And that is then multiplied by kr plus kf e raised to the power of negative infinity. And what we can say about the power e raised to the power of negative infinity is that if I have e um, being basically 1 over e and raised to the power of a very, very, very large number, then that means that number then goes to 0, which means that that whole portion goes to 0. And what we're left with is the concentration of a being equal to kr times the concentration of a naught divided by kr plus kf. If we do the same thing for the concentration of B, we would again be able to write Kf concentration of A naught all over Kr plus Kf. We have 1 minus E raised to the power of negative infinity. And again, in this case, since we have this value, that ends up going to 0. And again, this is because 1 over E raised to the power of a very, very large number, that number tends to go to 0 or that number will end up essentially being equal to zero. What that leaves us with then is that our equilibrium concentration of B is equal to Kf times the concentration of A naught divided by Kr plus Kf. I'm just going to denote my concentration of A as an equilibrium concentration as well, just to be explicit and, and uniform. And so as we start to answer the question, how long does it take to get to equilibrium, we can see that in both these examples, the major thing that changes is this exponential term, at least when we look at these two extremes, t is equal to zero, and as t goes to infinity. And so if we want to start talking about how long processes take, it seems like it's this scaling factor that we multiply the t by in the exponential that then starts to quantify how long it takes to go from, say, t is equal to zero to t is equal to infinity, just because as we go from this case where we have e raised to the power of 0 to this case where we have e raised to the power of negative infinity, it's this exponential term that is going to be the major component that then modifies whatever our concentration of a is and our concentration of b is. And on an intuitive level, this should make a lot of sense. Because again, we're basically moving between this regime where this exponential is equal to 1 to where this exponential is equal to, to 0. And that if the reaction rate is very, very, very fast in both directions, then that means then this summation that we're looking at here will then scale this exponential faster so that we go from this case where we're going from 1 to 0. And if my re reaction rates are very small, meaning my rate constants are very small, then the scaling of time will then happen much slower. And so then this transition from 1 to 0 will also happen very slowly. So let's just ask one final question before moving on. Let's say if we actually were to write down some rate constants and we wanted to actually calculate what our equilibrium concentration is. So let's say, what if our forward rate constant was equal to two times our reverse rate constant? What would that mean for our equilibrium concentrations? Well, that would mean that we would just be substituting in directly into these expressions that we just wrote. And so for our, our equilibrium concentration for A, then I would still write it equal to Kr times the concentration of A0 divided by Kr plus 2kr, because I'm essentially just substituting in for kf into this part of the denominator. And in this case, I can actually then just cross off all the krs since I have a common term. And what that leaves me with is my concentration of uh, a at equilibrium being equal to the concentration of a naught divided by 3, because I have 1 on top and I have 1 plus 2 on the bottom. I can do the same thing with my concentration of b at equilibrium. And so then here I get, in this case, I'm going to again substitute in my kf into this expression on top in my numerator. So that means I get 2 times kr times the concentration of a naught divided by kr plus 2 times kr. And so then my concentration of b at equilibrium, well, that's equal to, and again, I can cross off all my krs. And so now I have 2 on top. And I have 1 plus 2 on the bottom, so I have 3 on the bottom. And this result should feel intuitive, and it should feel intuitive for, for two reasons. The first one is, is that if our forward rate 
is ha occurring at twice the rate of the reverse reaction, then what that says is that we should have more of B than we should have of A in the end, because we're producing B at twice the rate that we're producing A. And that's what falls out of these equilibrium expressions. I have twice as much B as I do A. The other thing also here is that both of these terms, these equilibrium expressions, should be scaled as a function of the original concentration of A0. Because remember, we said that at t is equal to 0, we have the concentration of A being equal to the concentration of A0, meaning we have some initial amount of A in our system. But we also said our concentration of B is equal to 0. And since we have a 1 to 1 mole ratio, then that means then that everything is going to be scaled as a as a concentration of A0, because it, that is all we had in our system to begin with. And so again, because we've got twice the reaction rate going in the forward direction than the reverse direction, it shouldn't be terribly surprising that we get a result in the end where we have twice as much B as we do A in the system at equilibrium. And in fact, if we plot these integrated rate law expressions, where again this blue line is then the concentration of A as a function of time and this red line is the concentration of B as a function of time and we use the rate law expressions or the the relationship between the rate constants that we had before then we end up with what we just predicted a second ago where we have here our concentration of B at equilibrium being equal to two times the concentration of A naught over three and we have our concentration of A at equilibrium being equal to one-third of the concentration, the initial concentration of A naught.